Today's foreign political organization briefing is going to be on Islamic Jihad or the Islamic Jihad movement in Palestine, PIJ, in Arabic would be Harikat al-Jihad al-Islamiya fi Palestine. They are based in Damascus. Uh, they are a Palestinian Islamic organization founded in 81. PIJ together with Hamas and six other factions are members of the Alliance of the Palestinian Forces, which rejects the Oslo Accord and whose objectives is to establish a sovereign Islamic Palestinian state. They reject the two-state solution and promote the military destruction of Israel. Neither the PIJ nor Hamas are members of the PLO or Palestinian Liberation Organization. It's actually been labeled as a terrorist organization by the United States, EU, UK, Japan, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and Israel, of course. PIJ has undertaken numerous attacks on Israeli civilians, including suicide bombings, IDF. Israeli Defense Forces, of course, have conducted numerous, numerous operations against this group. Uh, they have suffered extensive operational loss, infrastructure loss, and as a result, by 2004, the organization had been severely weakened. Iran is a major financial supporter of the PIJ. The major financial supporter of Palestinian Islamic Jihad, of course, comes from Iran. No surprise there. Other financial backers are suspected to be Syria. The armed wing for Palestinian Islamic Jihad is the Al-Quds Brigade, and we will be doing a separate video on them. Uh, this is a group which is active in the West Bank and Gaza Strip with its main strongholds in the West Bank, being the cities of Hebron and Jenin. Its operations have included suicide bombings, attacks on Israeli civilians, as well as firing rockets into Israel from Palestinian territory. The PIJ has much in common with Hamas, with both fighting against the existence of Israel, both groups as well, were formed as offshoots of the Muslim Brotherhood, and the Alliance of Palestinian Forces and received large amounts of funding from Iran with similar goals. Hamas and PIJ have worked together on numerous operations. I think we can start to see a trend here that Iran pretty much supports anybody who is adamantly anti-Israel, anti-America. Now, in addition to the paramilitary wing of Islamic Jihad, much like the other groups that we have discussed, Palestinian groups, Islamic Jihad also controls dozens of religious organizations in the Palestinian territories that are registered as NGOs or non-governmental organizations and operate mosques, schools, medical facilities that offer free services. Like other associations, these are heavily scrutinized by the Palestinian National Authority who have shut some of them down actually in one Islamic Jihad kindergarten graduation, children dressed up in military uniforms waved guns, shouted anti-Israeli slogans, and spoke of blowing themselves up to kill Zionists. Now, Islamic Jihad also operates dozens of summer camps for children. I think we all know what that means. They have opened up 51 summer camps, which uh, attracted approximately 10,000 children in the year 2010. This is a big thing that I'm seeing with all of these organizations is that they really try to get the kids as young as possible, indoctrinate them, and train them up. These summer camps are definitely not like the summer camps that you and I have probably been to, at least when we were children. It should be duly noted by the listener that <clears throat> in addition to this organization, there are other similar sounding organizations such as the IJO or Islamic Jihad Organization. Harakat al-Jihad al-Islamiyya, which was a Shia militia known for its activities in the 1980s during the Lebanese Civil War. They demanded the departure of all American troops from Lebanon and took responsibility for a number of kidnappings, assassinations, and bombings of embassies and peacekeeping troops, which killed several hundred people. Their deadliest attack was in 83 when they carried out a uh, bombing of the barracks of French and U.S. MNF peacekeeping troops and that of the United States Embassy in Beirut. This was initially a very shadowy organization which not much was really known about. It seemed like a very secret organization that only the members really knew kind of what was going on. 
It has been compared to um, the Black September wing of Palestinian Fatah serving the function of providing its controlling organization, in this case Hezbollah, with some distance and plausible deniability from acts that might provoke retaliation from, you know, other problems, so to speak. This organization, from my research, is no longer around in 92. It kind of went away. However, these organizations, their names may change. However, they don't actually go away. There's a lot of different offshoots here, a lot of different militias and groups come and go, but they basically all kind of do the same thing. They're all fighting for Palestinian liberation. They're all fighting for a separate Palestinian state and the end of Israeli occupation for what they believe and perceive as their lands. Whether or not it is or is not, is not for me to decide. That's not what we're doing here. We're simply analyzing and taking a look at these different and various groups. There are so many of these different and various groups. However, when I come across a new one, or if I find one to be pertinent or relevant, I will absolutely make a briefing about them. These groups are linked with communist forces within the US and Europe and I believe that they are pertinent and relevant. Although much of the information that we've been hearing about as of late will stem and relate to and from China and communist forces within the United States, it is important to note that these groups are directly and indirectly related. And I believe that you will start hearing their names again in the news cycles at some point here in the future. Now, generally, when you watch the mainstream news, you will hear most of these different factions referred to simply as Hamas or Hezbollah, but that is not the case. There are many groups and many different wings of these groups and factions of these groups within each other, and it is important to know who is who in this context here because it really does matter when we talk about Middle East politics and more specifically Israeli-Palestinian politics. With this recent UAE peace deal and a possible Saudi-Israel peace deal coming up in the future, these groups will become more relevant. And I think that you will, again, start hearing about them. Now that you have been briefed on them, you will know and have a better understanding of what's going on geopolitically here. I appreciate you watching. Thanks for checking out the channel. Thanks for following us. If you haven't checked out our YouTube channel already, go ahead and do so, Gutter Fighting Secrets. Also, please consider visiting GutterFightingSecrets.com. We've got some really, really, really special stuff coming down the pipe in the next week or so. We are going to be releasing a couple of audio programs for direct download that you are not going to want to miss. Stand by on this page for updates. Until next time, please remember that you are your first and last line of defense, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers, Mother Flowers.